everybody, I'm Richard Holder. As you can see, I am at West Tech Performance. So right off the bat, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so I can keep coming here and doing all these crazy tests. Today we're talking about the five liter performance. That's right, the OG GT40 intake more specifically and how it compares to the other variant. You know what I'm talking about, the tubular GT40 intake manifold, the aluminum Cobra version installed on the 93 Cobra and Cobra R version. Also the 94 and 95 SN95 Cobra version, also aluminum. How do they compare to the one that you can get today? I'm talking about going to the wrecking yard, finding a five liter Explorer and taking that GT40-esque Explorer intake. The question is, how much power do they all make? So the question is, how well did the GT40, the tubular version, actually perform on our test mode? You remember stock 302, it had the blueprint CNC ported aluminum heads, it had the E303 cam, I'll go ahead and put the specs up here, and we had inch and three quarter long tube headers, and we ran this with the GT40 tubular intake manifold and a 65 millimeter AccuFab throttle body. All of this was tuned with the Holly HP management system and we had big injectors in it. So we could tune the air fuel and the timing and optimize the combination of each one of these intake manifolds. And remember this GT40 was originally offered as the upper intake manifold for the naturally aspirated 351 Lightning back in the day, and this intake manifold was offered by the guys at Ford Racing as a performance upgrade for your five liter Mustang. So our combination run with the GT40 upper intake manifold, and all of the combinations were run with the same GT40 lower manifold. All we did was uh, upgrade the tops on all of these. So run with the tubular intake manifold, our combination produced 364.8 horsepower and 377.5 foot-pounds of torque. You can see long runner GT40 style intake manifold, lots of torque production, and we made peak power out at 5,500 50, RPM. So now that we've taken a look at the tubular upper intake manifold, let's take a look at the rest. Naturally, if we're going to test all these GT40 base intake manifolds or the upper intake manifolds, we had to include the version from the SN95. A little different than the version from the previous 93 Cobra and Cobra R version, the SN95 has the little elbow kind of built in to attach the different SN95 base throttle body used, not the AccuFab piece. But we ran this combination as we did all the others and run with the SN95 version of the cast aluminum Cobra intake manifold. Our combination produced 356 horsepower, 355.8, and 365.9, so 366 foot-pounds of torque. To give you an idea, here's how it compared to the tubular GT40. 
it was down a little bit and we were surprised. Um, I need to go back and take a look and re-verify and measure the throttle body on this thing and make sure that the throttle body used was indeed a 65 millimeter throttle body and not something smaller. So I'll go ahead and put this up. If we, if the measurement turns out that it's something different, we'll go ahead and put that up in the video. But this intake manifold seemed to be down a little bit from the tubular GT40 and also from the cast aluminum version run on the 93 Cobra and Cobra R. was the aluminum version or the Cobra upper intake manifold, basically the aluminum version of the GT40. This was a production-based piece run on the 93 Cobra and Cobra R versions, as I said, basically an aluminum version cast of the GT40. And we also ran this with the same 65 millimeter AccuFab throttle body. And given its production unit and its similarity to the tubular GT40, not surprisingly, it made very, very similar power. In fact, equipped with this Cobra version, our combination produced 361 horsepower, slightly down maybe from the GT40, and 376.7 foot-pounds of torque. So very, very close. If you want to see an overlay, we can take a look and see. Here is how it compares basically directly to the GT40. They traded power a little bit back and forth, but you're talking about onesies and twosies. In fact, if we go ahead and zoom in here, we can see the difference 361 versus 364.8, so maybe four or five horsepower there, and we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end, but not surprisingly, very, very similar power curves and torque curves because the intake manifolds themselves are so similar. intake manifolds or upper intake manifolds that we compared here with all the GT40 combinations. This one was the one I was most curious about and more specifically I was curious about the Explorer intake manifold which is the one that you could go get is readily available. Some of the others are harder to get and, and more expensive now but the GT4 or the, the Explorer based version you can go to the rec yard and grab and the reason I was interested in it is I wanted to run a comparison between running the elbow that they run on that which is a 90 degree turn that mounts the throttle body and running no elbow because you could also mount the throttle bay directly to the intake manifold. So on this Explorer combination run with our 302 or modified 302 and equipped with the Explorer intake manifold, this thing just missed making 350 horsepower at 348. Peak torque checked in at 373 foot-pounds or 372.7. You can see it was down just a little bit maybe compared to the tubular GT40. We want to see a overlay of that we can take a look geez it is down a little bit compared to the uh, gt40 but now we should take a look at what happened when we remove the elbow which it turns out it was a little restrictive So we've taken a look at the Explorer intake with the factory 90 degree elbow. Let's take a look and see what happened when we removed that and just installed our throttle body right onto the intake manifold. So we had a direct feed for that. This was our combination with the factory elbow, the Explorer intake with the elbow, 348 horsepower. 
And here's what happened when we removed this elbow. You can see it did indeed pick up power. We'll go ahead and zoom in here. You can kind of see it wasn't a ton. It was a little bit 354 horsepower, basically. So we picked up a little bit. And here's another interesting test. We actually installed another elbow on here. And this was an elbow that my buddy Mark Sanchez had. It was designed to use on a Kenny Bell supercharger application that allowed the 5 liter kit basically to fit in an SN95 chassis. So they kept the kit the same the way that they made it for the Fox chassis and then made this elbow adapter to allow this combination to run. So we wanted to run this elbow and see how well it worked because we were running all of these <laughs> different elbows in GT40s. But here's what happened when we put the Kenny Bell elbow on there. You can see it actually made quite a bit more power. It picked up it went up to 361 horsepower. Peak torque was not changed a lot, 374, 75 foot-pounds. But you can see it did pick up power here up top. And the reason for that is this elbow was actually bigger than the opening on the elbow for the Explorer intake manifold. This one was actually... Uh, over 70 millimeters so it had probably more flow which helped it produce more power kind of on the top there and it helped out a little bit so that's another elbow i don't know if those are available anymore but we had it sitting around so we decided to test it okay guys which one of those is your favorite of course i'm talking about all the variations of the gt40 base upper intake manifolds for the five liter ford and as you can see we saw a little bit of a difference between the various combinations i think that the peak power differed by as much as 12 horsepower between the highest horsepower version which turned out to be the tubular gt40 and the lowest horsepower version which turned out to be the explorer version with the factory elbow on it but here's something else to consider if you take a look at the power differences between the two that's one thing obviously also take a look at the weight difference the tubular gt40 not only made the most power by a little bit in some cases but it was also the lightest of all of the versions. Obviously, all of the cast aluminum versions were a little bit heavier, and we know weight is a bad thing when it comes to performance. So if you're looking for performance, more power and less weight is the ideal combination. The one other thing that I want to mention here is obviously availability. A tubular GT40 anymore is kind of an expensive deal. Guys want lots of money for them, so you'll probably end up paying more for those than you will for some of these other versions. That's especially the case of the Explorer version which unfortunately made the least amount of power it did much better obviously when we installed the throttle body right onto the intake manifold without the elbow now the other thing i can i want you to think about is this although we did see a difference in power between the various versions of these gt40 intake manifolds the variation was not great in fact we could adjust the water temperature on this motor and make more of a power change than we saw from changing all of these intake manifolds so if all you did was cool your combination off you would likely make more power than upgrading the intake definitely something to think about i'm richard holder make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff i'll keep testing